It is a pleasure to be here reading to you. I'm Phil Mendelson. I am chair of the Council of the District of Columbia, which I'm sure is not of great interest. And what is of more interest, I hope, is that I'm going to read to you this morning from Harold and the Purple Crayon, one of my favorite books. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. Here's a picture if you can all see it. And you can see Harold has his purple crayon. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight. And he needed something to walk on. So you can see he's drawing a moon, and he's drawing a sidewalk. In my view, that is very creative. Harold had a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. See him walking? And he's got the moon there. But Harold didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. You can see the path is getting very long and very straight. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field. And the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. If you ask me, I think that's very clever because you could get lost in a forest, but if there's only one tree in the forest, Harold's not going to get lost. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought. so when they got red. I misread that a little bit. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. This is so that the apples would have a chance to turn red before being picked. It was a terribly frightening dragon. See the dragon right? There. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. I think we're getting to the exciting part of the story. Suddenly Harold realized what was happening, but by then Harold was over his head in an ocean. Gotta be careful if you're walking with a purple crayon. Harold came up thinking fast. And in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. Harold quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After Harold had sailed long enough, he made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. Hope you can all see that. And this art is brought to you by Harold. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So Harold laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. And I wonder what he's gonna serve for lunch. Well, let's turn the page and see. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. Now my favorite pie is rhubarb. Have any of you ever had rhubarb pie? But another great pie is cherry, and of course apple pie is an all time favorite. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left, and there should have been because nine pies is too much for anybody to eat. Harold hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. See all the pies there? Couldn't finish them. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. I have no idea why he picked a moose or a porcupine, but that's what he did. And off Harold went looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. So you can see the porcupine and the moose, 
And there he is off to find a mountain. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make it, the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought he could see the window of his bedroom. See Harold climbing up? I wonder how high he's going to climb. Well, let's turn the page and find out. Harold was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. This will be the next page before we find out what happens. Uh, but as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily, Harold kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and grabbed onto it. This is what we all need is a purple crayon that can draw whatever we need to save ourselves. And Harold made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So Harold made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think of where his window ought to be. All right, this part's gonna get a little intense. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. I hope he doesn't fall off. Uh-oh, he made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. That is a lot of windows. And guess what? None of the windows was his window. He couldn't think of where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And why did Harold thank him? Because that's a nice thing to do when somebody helps you. And Harold walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in his bed. And then suddenly, Harold remembered. What did he remember? If I could turn the page, we'll find out. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. His bedroom window was always right around the moon. See how I drew that window around the moon? And then Harold made his bed and he got in it and he drew up the covers Didn't say this, but you see he made curtains and he's got the window around the moon and gosh, that looks pretty cozy. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the story of Harold and the Purple Crayon. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading it to you because reading is a good thing. Thank you so much for listening.